I'm in love with the church girl is the title of a new movie opening in theaters this month. You're about to meet the executive producer and writer of this film. The story is about his real life as a major drug trafficker. Here's a sneak peek. This guy is the biggest drug trafficker in all of California, which is exactly why we want to nail this guy. You need to come to church with me and find yourself a good woman there. Oh, that's Vanessa. Ending. She goes to Bible study every week with my wife. It's not ending. It's only the beginning. It's only what church do you attend? Right now, I'm kind of in between churches. We have been praying for a godly man for Vanessa. Are you that godly man? I used to be a drug dealer, Vanessa. Coming from where I'm from, I'm from. Time to God. And it came at us hard. Fans all over the place, SWAT cars, guns. I think you're as dirty as sin. Would you like to tell me why there was a gun in your car? What do you want from me? The pain. What is so bad about going to church? Well, God don't want somebody like me in this church, okay? Well, joining me now is the man whose life story is the subject of the movie, I'm in Love with a Church Girl. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Gally Molina. It's nice to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Gally, in the movie, it is the rapper Jerule who plays you. Sure. <laughs> what are the similarities in your lives, would you say? Uh, I mean, we needed somebody very authentic to play the part. And the similarities are more now than they were before because obviously Jerule went away for a bit and now he's come home and mm -hmm. and uh so they they kind of intersect now more than than they did before how did you find each other how did you find someone that you felt was the right person who'd had the same background the same experiences and who could really relate to your story well i come from the music industry so i mean we went into the music roots and we wanted somebody with a platform that can reach the unreached so mm -hmm. to speak and um his acting is amazing so we wanted to make sure that the person who played the part would be captivating and, and had a, a following that would draw unbelievers as well. This is quite a, a new turn on the road for him, isn't it? <laughs> not, just, not just having spent some time doing time, but, <laughs> but also, also just having an opportunity to do something like this. Talk a little bit about how involved you actually were in your own life in drug trafficking. Well, it's very fast and furious. And at the time, I was, had a very successful career in music as a writer and a producer. And then, and then I had a very successful career in the street as well. So it was, you know, it was an appetite for destruction. And, um, you know, but I look back now, and the, the opening line in the movie says that, I wish I knew then what I know now. Yeah. So I know that God was just orchestrating things. And I just say, he take what was intended for evil and use it for good. When you were dealing, you weren't just selling little bags of something <laughs> to someone on the street. You were selling large quantities, right? Yes, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it wasn't your, your typical, you know, open the door, shove it through the, you know, through the peephole. So we were, you know, importing large amounts of drugs, you know, into the United States. And um, so, you know, if you can, I was always, if you're going to go bigger, go home. So that was, yeah. <laughs> that's, yes, why, that's yeah. why we were doing it that way. Well, how did you juggle those th two things? Because as you mentioned, at the same time that you were doing all of this, this drug buying, selling, you were also in business. I mean, you were doing well. How did you sure. juggle those two things? Just, just did it, you know. It was just like it was never. There was never no time for sleep. I was traveling all the time. It was doing was it shows. Was glamorous to you, or did you did you ever have a moment where you said, you know, maybe I shouldn't be doing this? I mean, what was going through your mind at that time? Yeah, most a lot of people have reasons for what they do, and I didn't. You know, Bible talks about being drunk on power, and for me, um, you know, I didn't. I didn't need it for the money. <clears throat> I come from a really good home, mm -hmm. college student. So for me, it was just kind of more of a, I wanted to be the man type of thing. But then it became so much more. Then the money really got intense and, and the power got really got intense. And it's just one of those things that just sucks you in. So how does a drug dealer who's trying to be the man meet a church girl? <laughs> How'd that happen? <laughs> you know, I was at a friend's house, a dear friend of mine, and, um, you know, walked, it was, I'm on a date with another lady and in walks this woman. And I was like, wow. And, we met and talked, and, and it, you know, our first date was to church. Um, so I go to church, and, and uh, my life was never the same again. Yeah. But she didn't really know your background at that point, right? Well, no, it, it, and especially where I was from, everybody knew me as this, you know, producer, Music artist. Producer, yeah, right. so it was easy to, to, to mask one thing with the other. 
Um, but no, she had an idea, I'm sure. There was a lot of rumors flying around, but I was very low key about those types of things. A lot of people mm -hmm. wear that as a badge of honor. I, I just was kind of like behind the scenes. Shortly after you became a Christian and now you're in a relationship with the church girl you're in love with, your past caught up with you. What happened? I was driving one day and I got indicted and here come all the cars and the helicopters and it was oh, DEA my. and U.S. Customs and they came with machine guns and lasers and and uh, next thing I know I w I'm in a cell and you know I always say I, I went to bed on top of the world and I woke up the next day with the world on top of me yeah. and the indictment came really heavy. Mm. How did God use that in your life? Well, you know, I, I look back now and I know that the time that I was going to church before this indictment came and had given my life to Christ, he was preparing me, I yeah. believe. And, you know, he could have stopped me for whatever I was doing. I know that. Mm -hmm. But it was something I chose to do. So I owned it. And I think he says, I'm going to give you just enough of my word to sustain you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take you to a place and we're going to spend some alone time. When the pruning time was on bail. Five years and 11 months. Wow. And then, you know, I, I plead out to, to almost five years in prison. And, um, and that was the refinement period, yeah. you know, and it was our alone time. And it was yeah. an amazing time. When you first started writing your story, you, you were really doing that in jail, not with any intention of doing a movie. Yeah. How did the movie, how did the story written down on paper become the movie? Uh, I sat in a law library and just typed and typed and typed. And I wrote book after book and manuscripts, so to speak. And I figured I'll put these out maybe when I get home. And, and I just got the vision when I was talking to some friends. And, uh, you know, I always say that when God gives you a vision, he gives you provision. Yeah. And, and you, don't th you don't know what you're going to do. But he didn't give Noah a schematic for the ark. But he gave him a little vision and some, some, some will and a know-how. And, man, God has just been so faithful in this whole process. And, mm -hmm. and from the investing to the, to the camera crews to the actors, this, this is the only film you will ever see so far that says executive producer God. <laughs> He's on the credits. Yes, he is. <laughs> and he's got the biggest title card of everybody. When people come to see the movie, Kelly, what do you want them to walk away with? That God is really real. And if he can use somebody like me, you know, from going from there to becoming a, a pastor now, um, that, that, that he can use anybody. Yeah, we forgot to mention that. That's what you're doing now. Yeah, right? yeah, you know. In addition I'm, to uh, film producing and writing and yeah, all of that. Yeah, man, that's, you know, I, Israel, I always say that, that God has been so faithful at RGM Newbreed because we stay faithful in the field. Mm -hmm. we, we go back and serve out of prospective churches, and we will never be bigger than the church, obviously. So, um, but I want people to understand that, that it's come as you are. Yeah. You know, there's the hashtag surrender, like, I don't care if you're a street guy, if you're, if you're, uh, you're this, this big, mighty, saved Christian, that, that God is for everybody. And the same blood that saved you saved those people, too. Yeah, exactly. The God of a second chance. That's right. And a third and a fourth. And a third and a fourth. And in my case, 90, 91. You know. <laughs> well, the movie is called I'm in Love with the Church Girl. It opens in theaters on Friday, October the 18th. You don't want to miss it. Gally, thank you so much for being with us for and for me. what you're doing. Appreciate it. It's great Terry. to have you thank here. Thank you.